Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's lesson on spatial encoding. This lesson focuses on phase encoding, including how it works and when it occurs during a pulse sequence. Phase encoding is one of the ways we are able to localize the MRI signal to specific locations in the body, so this concept is important to understand. Remember, spatial encoding in MRI is how we map the location of signals within the body to create a detailed image. Spatial encoding is performed by the gradient coils in the MRI scanner, which superimpose external magnetic fields on B sub zero, creating what is called a gradient magnetic field. Spatial encoding involves slice selection, frequency encoding, and phase encoding. Let's take a closer look at the process of phase encoding. Phase encoding is a method used to encode spatial information of a slice along its short axis when a short axis is available. If using a square field of view, there is no short axis, and, occasionally, we use the long axis of the anatomy for phase encoding. Phase encoding works by varying the phase of the magnetic spins in the tissue using a gradient magnetic field. Phase encoding occurs through the application of a phase encoding gradient, or PEG. This gradient is turned on just before the 180 degree rephasing pulse in a spin echo sequence and briefly turned on between the excitation pulse and the signal acquisition in a gradient pulse sequence. When the phase encoding gradient is applied, it causes the spins of the magnetic moments in different locations along the gradient to precess at different rates, depending on their position along the gradient axis. As the magnetic moments change their precession speed, their frequencies change as well. This is called phase shift. Remember, the speed of precession is directly related to the strength of the magnetic field. The strength of the magnetic field can be measured in Tesla or Gauss. So the magnetic moments on the steep end of the gradient magnetic field have an increase in their speed. This means they move further along their precessional path than they would have if we had not applied the PEG. The magnetic moments at the shallow end of the gradient magnetic field have a decrease in their speed. This means they move less along their precessional path than they would have if we had not applied the PEG. The magnetic moments at the isocenter or the center of the gradient do not experience a change in magnetic field strength. Therefore, they do not change in position along their precessional path. Because the magnetic moments are now in different positions along their precessional paths, the MRI system can differentiate between nuclei positioned at different locations because their signals are now different from each other. Think of phase encoding like marking each car in a race with a slightly different start time. By knowing their start times and when they cross the finish line, you can figure out their positions in the race. The PEG is turned on after the application of the RF excitation pulse in order to cause phase shift along the short axis of the slice. Once phase shift occurs, we shut off the PEG. This allows the magnetic moments to return to precessing at the Larmor frequency, but the phase shift stays until all signal is lost or another gradient is applied. It is important to note that the phase encoding gradient can be applied multiple times throughout a pulse sequence at different amplitudes and polarities. This will be discussed in more detail in a different lesson. A steep phase encoding gradient causes a large phase shift with many phase positions, like 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. on a clock phase. A shallow phase encoding gradient causes a small phase shift with fewer phase positions, like 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. on a clock phase. In an MRI scanner, the phase encoding is performed by specific gradient coils. The coil responsible depends on the desired imaging plane and the exam being performed. Let's take a look at a question to check your understanding. When magnetic moments are positioned at the steeper end of a gradient magnetic field during an MRI scan, how does their precessional frequency change? A. They precess at a faster rate than those at the shallow end of the gradient. B. They precess at a slower rate than those at the shallow end of the gradient. C. 
There is no change to their precessional rate. D. They reverse the direction of precession. Take a second and figure it out on your own. The correct answer is A. They precess at a faster rate than those at the shallow end of the gradient. This is because the strength of the magnetic field is higher at the high end of the gradient, causing the magnetic moments there to experience a stronger magnetic influence. As a result, their precessional frequency or Larmor frequency increases, leading them to precess faster compared to magnetic moments at the lower end of the gradient. In summary, Phase encoding is a method used to encode spatial information of a slice along its short axis. It works by varying the phase of the magnetic spins in the tissue using a gradient magnetic field. When the phase encoding gradient is applied, it causes the spins of the magnetic moments in different locations along the gradient to precess at different rates, depending on their position along the gradient axis. As the magnetic moments change their precession speed, they experience phase shift. The PEG is turned on after the application of the RF excitation pulse in order to cause phase shift along the short axis of the slice. The specific gradient coil used for the phase encoding depends on the desired imaging plane.